know who it's coming from because I've fact traced it and I know who's emailing and who's doing it and you've been reported to this. And today I'll go through 10 of 4chan's darkest rabbit holes. I've talked about some of these topics in previous videos already, so I'll try to go more in depth and provide new perspectives or information. Some of these topics are really unknown and absolutely endless in terms of depth, while others are widely known. We'll start off with some better known rabbit holes and then move on to the more obscure ones. So for this rabbit hole, we'll only look at one topic, but there are endless topics that are very similar to this case. Davy Vanity, a celebrity at the time, was accused of having intercourse with an 11-year-old named Jessica Leonhardt, who went by Jesse Slaughter online. Jessie herself debunked the allegations, saying that she was just friends with him. Still, she was getting insulted by other posters, which resulted in the following video from her. To all you f***ing haters, okay? Guess what? I'm happy with my life, okay? And if you can't, like, realize that and stop hating, then you know what? I'll pop a Glock in your mouth and make a brain slushy. Well, this caused backlash online and caught the attention of 4chan. This is a pretty big topic, so I won't talk about everything here, but certain events are definitely noteworthy. After the video was circulating on the b-board, Anons managed to dox her after hacking into her Facebook account, which contained a lot of personal information. Her house was getting constant orders of food or other deliveries, resulting in the following video, which made things way worse for the family. I'm gonna tell you right now, this is from her father, you bunch of lying, no good and I know who it's coming from because I've back traced it and I know who's emailing and who's doing it and you've been reported to the cyber police and the state police. So you better write one more thing or screw with my computer again You'll be arrested. You End of conversation from her father. And if you come near my daughter, guess what? Consequences will never be the same. Unsurprisingly, this was just perfect meme material for 4 channers. And due to the constant harassment, however, police was involved. The police couldn't identify a single case of Anons threatening Jesse. Still, things slowed down drastically after police involvement. After a while, an article was released, claiming that Jesse's father punched his daughter on the mouth. He wasn't imprisoned, but the family's relationship was now dysfunctional. Jesse's entire life was also drastically affected because of it, so she had to be hospitalized in numerous medical institutions. Her father also died a few years later. In 2017, Jesse got so sick that she is now wheelchair bound. This all started because a pop star was accused of having intercourse with Jesse, which Jesse immediately dismissed. Strangely, in 2018, the same guy was accused again of assaulting numerous young fans from 2006 to 2015, which makes this case even crazier than it already is. Jesse's life was destroyed for absolutely no reason. So this section is more disgusting than truly disturbing. Around 2013, Anons pushed a trend and hashtag called Cutting for Bieber. This was portrayed as a boycott, since Justin Bieber was caught smoking a joint in a TMZ interview, and this was their way of stopping him from smoking. I know it's so unbelievably dumb, but at the same time, and probably even now, his fanbase consisted of very naive people, so it wasn't surprising that some thought this would actually be effective. It was all over the news and also trending on Twitter. And while some didn't engage in the trend, it was obvious that due to Justin Bieber mainly targeting a younger demographic, that this wouldn't turn out well. The topic overall was obviously just a hoax, and even the results of this trend were fabricated. BuzzFeed did some more investigations and saw that Anons would meet in a private IRC build and self-hosted chat room. As we can see from the chat log, it's just multiple Anons trying to create this hoax and push it on different social media sites such as Reddit, Twitter or Tumblr. Further, they even faked the passing of a teenage girl named Addison to blame it on Justin Bieber. To make this even more believable, they created a false social media trail for this fake Addison girl and started the hashtag RememberAddison. But this wasn't enough. They made numerous SoundCloud files where they were mourning the fake passing of this girl. So I had a terrible day because I found out about my friend Addison and I bought myself a new blade and just sat there thinking. They also created an anonymous SoundCloud file in which they threatened to hack into 9 
A site called Nine Gag started this whole thing. We do not forgive. We do not forget. We are Legion. Expect us. All of this was eventually exposed, but there were genuine victims because of the trolling of a few Anons. This shouldn't be a surprise to nobody, but there were a lot of cases tied to 4chan of perpetrators taking the lives of multiple people and announcing it beforehand on the platform. There are a few cases that will fit here, but I'll only talk about two on the following. In 2013, a college student named Neil McKinney's made a post on the random board B. Hey B, it's time. My name is Neil McKinney's, and I go to New River Community College in Christiansburg, Virginia, 10 minutes away from Virginia Tech. I'm gonna give you all the details, because the news never gets it right. Stevens 320 shotgun, buck shots and slugs, search New River Valley public safety. I'm a bit nervous, because I've never really handled a gun before, but a few times with the Christiansburg police. Anyway, this is not a high score game, but actually a lesson. That's why I'm at school. When I see my e-portfolio or what I look like, make sure there's a slash at the end before clicking on the link. Also, the picture is related. I'm at school writing this. Wish me luck. Three minutes later, on the 12th of April 2013, a gunman opened fire with a shotgun at a satellite campus at the New River Valley Mall in Christiansburg, Virginia. That's the exact location that OP described. Two women were wounded. An off-duty security guard and two police officers subdued OP. The suspect is Neil Allen McKinney's, 18 years old at the time of his arrest and a resident of Christiansburg. McKinney's was convicted of two counts of malicious wounding and two counts of the use of a firearm during the commission of a felony, and was held without bond. He was sentenced to 38 years in prison. While he didn't succeed, the intention was clear. Looking back at his post, it seems like he's joking. He even says that it's not a high score game, but rather a lesson, since he's in school. Another case is of a guy named Robert Hawkins. In this one, he made a post stating, Later today, I'm going to bring my rifle to one more department store at the West Road Small Omaha, Nebraska, to try to beat Cho's high score. I'm going out in style. With Cho's high score, he's referring to the Texas Tech shooting with 31 victims. Many Anons pretty much just cheered him on to do it, like always, so nothing really surprising about it. Let me be clear though, with all of these posts, it might be possible due to different time zones etc. that this pose is fake. This goes for pretty much everything in this video, where the time is crucial. In this case, the pose was made one hour before the incident, so it could be real or it was somehow tampered with. So as for what happened, an hour after this post, Robert Hawkins went to a mall and took the lives of nine people, including himself. I made two videos on this one already, and it's definitely one of the darkest fortune topics ever. It has been investigated across X, B and Paul. There are a lot of very suggestive and inappropriate pictures on this and other websites, which definitely can be considered as CP. I obviously cannot show a whole lot in this video. On 4chan, people were discussing two specific websites, one of which was already taken down. Both were easily accessible through Google and contain graphic content. The House of Shy website is still online. They contain pictures of children wearing very revealing clothing, like bikinis or underwear, and they are posing in very inappropriate positions. I wouldn't say it is illegal to look at it, but it definitely seems very fishy. At first glance, it's just a really ugly 90s site containing a bunch of hyperlinks. Some of these are video files that will automatically be downloaded on your PC without any warning. Some anons claimed back then that some of these include real CP, especially on the second website, which has now been taken offline. Also, there are weird cryptic runes randomly spread around the website. Clicking on them will redirect you to some religious explanations about languages and numbers. This is where we meet Dr. Jai Li, the guy behind all of this. All of these photos and videos on these websites are produced by him, since he owns a television network named Nation of Shy Television and he's producing movies, mostly with minors involved in it. It's very hard to give Jai Li the benefit of the doubt, because the images also contain descriptions which are really, really disgusting. If a party really sucks, are you in or out? Barbie gets 9 inch nailed. Flashing a juicy tongue and cheek smile as faces pop, jaws drop and holy muffins melt. 
There was even one case during the research on 4chan, where an anon stumbled upon an audition tape from a minor for Zhai Li's movies. It depicts a minor reading out a monologue for an audition. They reached out to her asking, Hello, this is unsolicited, and I hope I'm not being intrusive, but I'm wondering if you could tell me anything you know about the film called House of Shy's House Parties. You uploaded an audition for this film on your YouTube channel, which I discovered after doing some more research into it. There's reason to believe that the creators of this film are linked to child trafficking. There's a website for it, which is very shady. Thanks. Instead of receiving a reply from her, Anon received a reply from the mother. It reads, I didn't allow her after learning more about it. Thank you. They had a little back and forth, and the mother ended up sending the email. It basically contains a script that she needed to read out in the audition video. You might be curious as to why this guy didn't get investigated by the police yet, even though we know what he looks like and what his name is. Well, now it starts to get really complicated. And Shai Li might not even be his real name. I read a theory a while back that he is a part of a movement which believes in the idea that black people own America, thus they don't need to abide by the laws of the country. In this movement, it is common to just change your name to something else. He even has companies, but they all seem fake, since they don't even have real locations. On this website with the caption children, he shares more personal information. He was born on the 21st of May 1964 in Chicago. He also was a part of the Indiana Avenue Pentecostal Church of God at a very young age. He claims that he is a doctor and has established a Tai Chi research center in North America. Here you can see an anon asking the girl how she ended up auditioning for Zhai Li's movie. She says that she received a mail and did a self-tape audition. She ended up declining the role since the emails from Zhai Li were strange, reading, I have the uttermost confidence in you, Ava. When I saw your submission photo, I thought, oh great, another Tory. But her mom will probably think that she'll be ungutted, ground into burgers, and secretly being disposed of by being fed to overweight, overpaid transport drivers. I'm very glad that you and your mom haven't realized that former cast members are actually in the pizza slices. Extra cheese works every time. Please take a look at the cast of House of Shy's House Parties, the movie. Go Ava, go. Much love to you, Jai. Some of these words are obvious terms that are very common in CP circles. And keep in mind that this terminology was not used back then as excessively. This rabbit hole dates back to over a decade ago. The likelihood of any of this being fake is very slim, but not impossible. This is a gigantic rabbit hole. Someone has spent several years posting strange messages about Captain Coochie's key lime pies all over the internet. Let's call that mysterious post or KLP from now on. KLP wrote thousands of reviews about one single restaurant. It was unclear if the restaurant even existed. The user praises key lime pies and goody goody cheeseburgers served at Coochie's Key West Cafe. After a bit of digging, people found out that the restaurant was long defunct, meaning the poster would make thousands of posts throughout 7-9 to nine years for a place that didn't even exist anymore. Let me just give you an example of how his post looked like. I tried the Captain Coochie's Key Lime Pies and those pegasms healed all my symptoms within the first 4 weeks. I highly recommend Captain Coochie's Key Lime Pies for anything that ails you. They are great. Kobe Bryant may be retiring from basketball, but Captain Coochie's is still his pie of choice. Can't get enough of their key lime pie. Key lime pie, key lime pie, and so on. The large number of bizarre posts has the people on Fortune and Reddit to speculate about the identity of the poster and the purpose of the comments, wondering if it's a crazy person, a troll, a bot, or a conspiracy. This is pretty much the point where it gets disturbing. For 7 to 9 years, someone dedicated a large portion of their time writing thousands of reviews about a restaurant that closed years ago. The hundreds of reviews from KLP don't seem to be automated either, since every text has some variation or difference. It is realistic to assume that the poster must be an older gentleman, probably in his 60s. If we were to assume that it indeed is one individual doing this, then it's likely that he suffers from a mental condition. After I made a full deep dive video on this topic over two years ago, I also heard that the reviews of KLP served as encrypted communication for the military and intelligence agencies in America. This was also being discussed in the Kuchis Key Lime Pie subreddit, a group that was dedicated in solving this entire mystery. But after people feared for their privacy, 
the subreddit owner closed the entire subreddit. To this date, it hasn't been conclusively proven what the purpose behind all of those reviews were, though the encrypted communication theory seems to be the final lead investigators had. To me, it seems like a bit of a stretch, and the argumentation isn't as plausible, but I didn't really have access to the stuff on the subreddit, so I could be wrong here. This is a very interesting one, since it's very mysterious and remains unsolved to this date. It also goes way deeper than what I'll talk about in this video. In 2015, OP started a very disturbing, quote-unquote, game. He states that he took the lives of multiple women for pleasure. If Anos managed to correctly guess the name of his victims, he'll post an image of him. He gave a restriction beforehand. Ten names per post, any more and it will be ignored. If Anons guess all of the names, he'll provide the location of a dumped body in 1999. To show that he's serious, he attached an image. Anos obviously played along, trying to guess the correct name. Someone did, so OP provided, sharing an image containing a female. Through the timestamps on these images, he somewhat proved that these are real and coming from him. Additionally, a reverse image search was done with the initial image. A few Anons claim that the woman shown in the image is Shauna Maynard. In 1998, her body was found in a roadway. She was 17 at the time of the occurrence. However, this was debunked by police. While the police didn't elaborate, the Las Vegas police told Action News that it appears to be a hoax and isn't valid. The lieutenant also said, quote, The family suddenly gets thrust back into the mix of these type of terrible emotions. They may, you know, start reliving the trauma of this and it's just a really horrible thing to do. It shows that someone really doesn't have any type of conscience whatsoever. The cruelty of that is beyond belief. I mean, if you think about how the woman's family has been suffering for all of those years. Finally, the images that OP shared definitely were made for private reasons, since they didn't resemble crime scene situations. It's very likely that OP took the lies of these women. Anons didn't really hesitate and called the FBI. The conversation was shared. Here's the clip. Uh, hello. I, I, I don't know if I... I was confused. I don't know if I pressed one, two, or three. Anyway, um... I have information regarding an individual who was killed a long time ago named Shauna Maynard. It was posted on a website called 4chan that uh, someone claimed that they had killed several women within the last few years and then posted several different pictures, very graphic pictures, and then uh, people on the website thought it was very strange and they managed to identify one of the victims as Shauna Maynard. So, uh... OP made another post, sharing one more image. This time it was a male, and he added the caption, dying, dying. After this, he shared one more image from a different perspective. Some guessed that the male could be George Tony Sandoval. His remains have been recovered in 2020, but no one knows who the perpetrator is. OP finished off the post by stating that he'll return in a month's time to quote-unquote finish our game. However, he never returned. There were numerous investigation threats on XMB, but as far as we know, OP was never caught and the investigation may still be ongoing, but there weren't any additional results. For this one, the R9K board is pretty interesting. R9K was initially a board where users were not allowed to make reposts. Every post on the board needed to be unique. Attempting to make reposts would result in a temporary ban, which would increase with each offense. The initial intention of this board was obviously quickly dismissed. For some reason, the board grew into a community of needs and hikokomoris, where Anons share real or fictional stories about mostly their own insecurities and their unhappy lies. A hikokomori is a socially defunct person, oftentimes caused through a mental disorder. A need on the other hand stands for not an education or training. Being in need is oftentimes only a temporary state, whereas a hikikomori can be permanent. Eventually, in the last few years, the quantity of posts referencing femboys grew. Most of these posts are obvious trolls, but there is huge encouragement for these already insecure men to just transition to the opposite gender to finally have some intimacy with another individual. This is pretty much seen as the solution to everyone's problem. Have a sad and depressed life. Just transition and attract men instead. But why was R9K used for these purposes, when there are already boards on Fortune for this exact reason? Was there maybe a group behind this entire thing? Around 2019, P 
People found allegedly proof of the fanboy movement being a coordinated effort by a group of people who wanted to disrupt the R9 keyboard. There is a short article titled Reiko's Trap Harem, which goes more into detail. Reiko's Trap Harem, or Harem, refers to a controversy surrounding allegations that an online k poster on 4chan associated with the Discord handle Reiko3333 convinced various young men to take hormone therapy pills and become traps. According to the allegations, Reiko forced several R9K users into his harem by persuading them to share nude pictures of themselves after they had taken the hormone therapy pills to prove they were taking the drug. These were subsequently used to dox and blackmail the victims, although this was never confirmed. There were numerous Discord messages shared where this Reiko person would say stuff like, I won't rest until every sissy boy on R9K had started HRT or at the very least cross-dressing. There was another screenshot where Reiko shared numerous threats that were supposedly created by himself to further push his beliefs on other anons. He also shared this message here. My ultimate fantasy is kidnapping a cute boy and locking him up in my basement. I let him consume nothing but soylent, estrogen and milk. Every day when I catch him about to sleep in bed, I'll enter his room, manhandle him into a chair, restrain him and put him in front of a monitor that is showing terabytes of trap and sissy hype no videos. Finally, an anon made this post. Join Trap Discord group. They asked me for a picture of me dressed up in order to join. It's like a cult. Everyone worships Reiko. Turns out they have doxxed me and have all my info. They are blackmailing me with the pic, saying that if I don't take HRT, they'll mail it to my family and friends. They've done this to numerous other people. There were some screenshots to supposedly prove the claims the anon made here. If I don't have any other picture of your thighs by the end of the hour, I'll be messaging your mom about our little secret. Let me be clear though, there is zero evidence of Reiko actually forcing anyone to do anything. There is also zero evidence of blackmailing. Though he himself claims that there have been leaks that will prove that he indeed was blackmailing, this seems to be a troll, but it's really difficult to find out the truth since all the evidence we have are screenshots, which can easily be falsified or construed in a way to troll or manipulate the public. Regardless, what Reiko claims himself though is that he indeed was spamming the R9K board with others and they were also actively getting paid to do so. Apparently, another girl on the server would pay these guys with money she made off of crypto. It's crazy to what length people go to for a bit of trolling on a fortune board, but is anyone surprised at this point? I mean still, the stuff that he and his group did weren't really good in any way. There are genuinely insecure men on that board and his trolling certainly did cause harm. But to portray him worse than he actually is is maybe also incorrect, if we were to believe that he didn't actually force anyone. He says that his intentions were always good and that he was only pushing women in the right direction to get homebrew HRT. To what extent you want to believe this is up to you. In the beginning of June 2013, a guy named UTV was very active on the sports board on 4chan. He was really into football according to his posts. However, there was one more person that had an unhealthy obsession with UTV. Their name remains unknown, but Anons call him the Archiver. You'll soon understand why. Sooner or later, UTV realized that the Archiver was pretty odd. He called him obsessed and claims that he just wants attention. The Archiver had a few interactions with UTV, which lasted several months. His last interaction was posted on the board TRB. I've been with UTV for 255 threats. This is the last one. My parents have discovered my UTV works and they have insisted I remove everything of the tie from my computer and be done with it. They'll be monitoring my activities now to make sure I cannot do it anymore. They've given me a day to remove everything and this is my final message. I'm sorry to UTV and hope he sees and understands this. I have one more gift to share with him. This 97 page document contains every personal work I've created that involves UTV in any way. It is for him. I don't want anyone else to read it. However, I cannot stop you from doing so. These 255 threads have each been amazing and I'll never forget them. Goodbye." And he wasn't lying. He literally created a 97 page PDF obsessing over a random guy on 4chan. No joke. Let me get this straight, the archiver was most certainly trolling, but it's so elaborate and sophisticated that one has a hard time believing that this was done by a mentally healthy individual. And regardless of it being a troll, just put yourself in UTV's shoes. You have a random anonymous person obsess over you on 4chan, a platform known for its anonymity. The PDF contains a lot. For instance, here he shares multiple pages worth of poems and song parodies for UTV. 
He also shared funeral plans when UTV passes away, even creating a funeral layout. On this page, he shares his plans for moving in with UTV, yet again creating a layout, this time of their envisioned apartment. Since the archiver cannot actually get in contact with UTV in real life, he decides to create various techniques to make himself feel closer to him. He labels certain food in his house, which belongs to UTV. He wants to invent a doormat with posts of UTV's haters, so he can wipe his feet on them when he exits his home. Further, he wants to invent a belt with UTV posts. The reasoning for that is that whenever he leaves his house, he may miss UTV too much and the post may make him miss him less. He decided to create a ransom note by using words that UTV himself used, also sharing plans when he decides to abduct him, reading, I will keep him in my bathroom. This way he would be hidden and unable to make much noise. He would also be able to see my naked body without feeling creeped out or like I'm trying to make sexual advances on him. I wouldn't be making any advances on him, but seeing my naked body would be good for him to get to know who I am. I would likely feed him meat and sandwiches and joke about it being annoyed cat food because this will calm him down and make him feel at ease. Of course I'd be bluffing and would never allow any harm to come to my dearest treasure. In the last few pages, he literally timestamped every single interaction he had with UTV. He did this for every single day. So this topic is by far the biggest nerd rabbit hole I know of. It's a very unknown topic. The last video I made on the channel is a full deep dive about this cult. I highly advise you to check it out to fully understand this topic, since I will only give a quick summary in the following. Basically, there was a real-life cult called the Cult of Saturn, dating anywhere between 2009 to 2013, who would use 4chan and other platforms like Reddit or Worlds.com to recruit members. The head of the cult was a guy that went by Frank Webster. The reason as to why this is such a gigantic rabbit hole is a 5GB raw file found on Anon files, consisting of a lot of information about the cult. Initially, the cult would try to recruit people by posting job ads on the internet. The application process, however, was very cryptic and weird. Applicants were asked to review other applicants' work and were told to ring them up to psychologically destroy them. In other instances, they were asked to go to random places, though nobody was there and cryptic symbols had been left behind. Some were told to show up at certain places for interviews, but would end up being locked up in the rooms the interview should have taken place in. On top of all of this, the cult also claimed to have a book called The Book of Key and Lock of Saturn. Allegedly, this book holds secrets to alchemy, occultism, and other secrets of the universe. While a few annons claimed to have possessed the book, and even uploaded images of pages of the book cover, the real existence of this book is uncertain as of to date. Besides this, they would later also come up with the idea to create alternate reality games to build up hype and momentum to recruit members online. This backfired, since Frank Webster couldn't really handle the sudden influx of members, and the entire thing was eventually memed by Anons, resulting in the downfall of the cult. I also made a full deep dive video on the biggest 4chan rabbit hole ever. Click here to see it.